Matt 49, Smith & Wesson 76. Two guns that faced off and fought to the death in Vietnam. Coming at you right here, right now on the VSO Gun Channel. So as we come back in, uh, before we go fire these, I want to uh, highlight a couple things. First of all, again, this was a, a French uh, submachine gun. And if you remember your history, they were in Indochina before uh, the U.S. came in. And this was carried by the French Foreign Legion and the French paratroopers. A lot of guns were washed, you know, to, to reinstill French national pride. They wanted to make their own machine gun. And this is probably one of the better 9mm submachine guns that was manufactured. It had some very modern features. It has a grip safety, which you don't normally see. It used the uh, folding stock similar to the grease gun. Uh, what's unique is when this gun goes in the battery, unlike most sub guns, you can have a loaded magazine in the chamber. And so this would pull down, it's in battery. When the paratroopers are jumping, they could jump with this, uh, with the magazine. Another very uh, unique feature about the Mount 49 is this has a hole and the bolt actually goes inside of a bow shroud. So as the uh, bolt will go forward, it actually is going inside before it hits the barrel. So if you have an out of battery fire, it vents the pressure and you won't damage the machine gun. So this is a very sturdy uh, submachine gun. Uh, the magazine release is on the bottle of the handle which is another unique feature to this gun. Most sub guns, if you hold them by the magazine when you're firing, it'll jam the gun. This actually has a grip so that prevents you from grabbing the mag so you won't jam the gun inadvertently. And unfortunately, a lot of these guns were captured at Dien Vinh Phu uh, as the French were pulling out of Vietnam. And that's how we in the U.S. started facing this gun. And again, we had the features such as the grip safety. This shoots around 450 rounds a minute. You'll see it's very similar to the MP40. Very controllable, very good rate of fire for the type weapon it is. Because it does have a slow rate of fire, it does not have a selector switch. It's full auto only. The Smith & Wesson 76 is about a 700 round rate of fire, very similar to the UD-42. And this does have both semi and full, so you could go select fire, but much higher rate of fire. So this will be very similar, uh, coincidentally, as the UD-42 and the MP-40 of the rates of fire and comparing these two sub guns. First things first, push the, uh, or pull out on the stock, push the button, pull it to the second position. Keep in mind that if you don't let go, it will come out, but have it locked into place there. Grip safety, as mentioned. Loaded magazine into the gun, push and fold into place, and check this out. Early feature dust cover folds open. Tell me that isn't cool compared to the technology at the time. You can't hardly argue with it. We're gonna light it up. I don't know, boys and girls. There was a lot of ringing on that one. I I like this gun. This is this is maybe one of my favorite ones thus far. This is uh, this thing's pretty cool. And uh, same plate. Not quite as good as the last one. I lost the front side a little bit. The aperture at the rear here. Um, I didn't notice this earlier, but this is a rotary aperture. So I could have changed to a little less uh, fine sight for uh, that full auto fire. But this gun is a ton of fun. We're going to go get the set Smith & Wesson 76. Uh, this is the last U.S. produced submachine gun that was used by the armed forces. Two reasons for that. The first one was the CAR-15 was coming into uh, its full capability. and. Uh, so after the Vietnam War, it was easier to use a rifle cartridge in combat versus a pistol cartridge. This was initially designed from the Swedish, Swedish K, but it has a couple different features. One, it's lighter, and the other thing, it has a, a quick detachable barrel. So unlike most subguns, this subgun, you can just very quickly and easily uh, take off the barrel. It's a very quiet submachine gun. So this was used by the SEALs uh, in the early 70s through the end of the Vietnam War. Uh, and then it came back to the United States. The next subgun that was used because they went from the open bolt design to the closed bolt was the H&K. So this has a unique place in American history in that it's the last U.S. produced subgun uh, that was used by the armed forces. 
and uh, this is a hoot to shoot. It's very reliable, sort of designed from the uh, grease gun, very few moving parts and, and a very filled capable gun. And uh, these guns actually faced off, so that's another interesting aspect. The folding stock on this thing, you actually pick it up and roll it back. Same thing if you're going to roll it forward like that. Pick it up, roll it back. It's actually, as far as wire stocks are concerned, it's a flat wire, so it's actually not all that bad. Now, <laughs> this is the one that is going to get you. I'm going to show you guys this before we actually shoot the gun so you guys can see it. This thing's got like a million pound trigger. In fact, Steve is trying to tell me that I need to use two fingers to shoot this thing, but my big meat, my big sausage fingers barely fit in there. So I'm gonna do it with one, even though it's fairly unpleasant, but it's got a, it's got a lot of pressure on dropping that bolt. We are ready to run. We're gonna start out on semi, just a couple rounds, get a feeling for it. And, Okay, I could shoot with a million pound trigger, we're good. Uh, rotate the selector over to full. And here we go, boys and girls. Good Lord. Stock sucks. Yeah, the stocks, I, I, re I retract my previous statement. The stock of this thing sucks. <laughs> and then we'll try and run a sub mag as well. So here we go. Uh, burst fire. This gun suppressed is Absolutely ridiculous. Ab and, and you're using trigger control. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, that's how I normally shoot anyway, but yeah, you know. All right, subs. See if we got a sound difference here. I'm gonna put a couple off the plate. That's also known as, I'm calling misses. So that's at any point in time, I can start hitting it and it's okay, right? Because I did it on purpose. Man, I tell you what, this gun suppressed is ridiculous. Deadly. This thing Deadly. is like, I didn't like this gun, now I love this gun. Like, I didn't like it at first. Like, I'm like, eh, I can take this one or leave it. Like, this gun suppressed is where it's at. Uh, the MAT is the abbreviation for Manufacturer National de Arms Tool, so M-A-T, that was their abbreviation, and it's model 1949, so it's a okay. MAT-49. Got it. There are three or four different major armories in France. As they were manning back up, having lost the first two world wars. <laughs> uh, I've got to compose myself. I, I have to. When you got Steve won't run around, what am I supposed to do? All right, here we go. And there's very few of these in the United States. I personally was very fortunate to uh, get this firearm. Uh, I met a gentleman who brought it back from Vietnam. He was uh, serving in Vietnam in 1967. He, uh, he was actually in a firefight where they were on a patrol boat river with a SEAL team, and he killed the guy that owned this gun. Uh, he brought it back illegally to the United States, going back to Vietnam in 68. He happened to be at the post office, saw there was an amnesty registration. He amnesty registered this uh, 30 November 1968, the last day of the one and only amnesty registration. And now I have the, this gun, I have the history, photos from 